Welcome to Card On Over Coffee. Please remember to join us live Monday through Friday on Twitter Spaces, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. UTC. Today, we have Blue Shift. Joining us from the team is Pete, Exena, and Seb. We're going to learn about their cross-chain liquidity that they're bringing to Cardano. Remember to join us live at Rare Evo in Denver, Colorado, August 24th through the 26th. Get your tickets now at rareevo.io. Save 10% by using coupon code COC10. Let's jump right in with Blue Shift. Introduce us to Blue Shift. Tell us a little bit about how Blue Shift came about. I know you've been on the show in the past, but give us a little background for those that might not know what Blue Shift is about. You not? Sure. Yeah, go ahead, Zena. I would like. Yeah, no, I would actually like to introduce a little bit of who is here uh, on behalf of our team and then ask uh, Sebastian to give a nice uh, intro. So we're here with three of us. Sebastian is our strategy director. Uh, Pete is our content manager. And um, myself, um, I'm responsible for marketing here at BlueShift. And we're quite excited to present and announce the launch of our long-awaited bridgeless cross-chain protocol so we are going to be talking a lot about what this is and uh sebastian why don't you take it from here yeah of course um so yeah who am i um, i've been working with blue ship for quite some time i'm also based uh in amsterdam i've been a professor there for 12 years and yeah now at Blue Shift also responsible for the, the strategy part, also related to business development. Um, but I think it's less about me today, more about Blue Shift and our amazing development that we've been going through. Uh, maybe a brief or a overview of, of our history, where we where we come from, how we started, uh, and where we are today with our uh, new cross-chain uh, solution. So we launched last year on Milcometa C1 as a, uh, yeah, as a, as a DEX, of course, but with a very innovative portfolio-based approach. So in very simple terms, we don't have pairs, but we have portfolios, which makes uh, swaps way more efficient, so up to 10 times lower in permanent loss, lower price slippage, and just a very nice uh, place for everyone who is interested in trading. But at the same time, also a very nice, attractive place for everyone who is more interested in long-term investments. And uh, I mean, Sena will probably talk about uh, the Cardano index later on as well. Uh, but um yeah, so those portfolios, those indexes are also allow us uh, as a DEX to be the number one place for everyone who's really interested in, in the long-term development, who's maybe not so much interested in, yeah, individual type of uh, assets, but more interested in investing in DEXs and funds like DEXs and also uh, earn the associated APR. So that's where, where we come from. Uh, and the way we've extended this more or less traditional DEX types of business is we brought this portfolio approach to the cross-chain uh, environment. Uh, so how did we do that? So it's it's not, of course, not only decision uh, to be cut or to transform a traditional DEX into a cross-chain DEX, but also some more technical development behind it. So we've been working uh, and now we will successfully launch it today into uh, today, uh, working our cross on on our blues chain solution, which is at the foundation uh, of what we'll be introducing uh, today, which is more of a holistic and very integrated approach. Because we not only take the uh, the Dex approach to the cross chain environment, but we also share very many characteristics with cross chain liquidity aggregators. So uh, examples that you have there are symbiosis, for example, or, or chains, change. Um, and that is why it's, it's kind of interesting to, uh, to see uh, what's really becoming possible thanks to this development. And uh, eventually our, our idea is to become or to provide the users who are interested in cross-chain swaps or cross-chain liquidity aggregation a place where they can do all these super interesting things which are built on the on the latest trends of the emerging interoperability realm uh the 
a nice place to execute their their swaps and and their investments in a very seamlessly and unified uh, way. So with, with just a couple of clicks, and as Senna has mentioned in the beginning already, uh, everything without bridges. Uh, so uh, it's a quite quite an innovative approach, but I think uh, we'll get into it in more detail later on. But this, uh, as a quick introduction to where we come from, so portfolio-based DEX on Milcomet C1, and now um, launching our cross-chain liquidity aggregation solution, which is which will be launched on, uh, of course, all the other ecosystems on which we're on, which are Mercomeda A1, Kava, and uh, Polygon, with some more to come. Yeah, and Jenny has posted some, there's definitely a video up there and some other information from Blue Shift's timeline. If you're interested in, in looking at uh, what is coming the, the you keep saying bridgeless interchain bridgeless swaps and that how that's all i want to know is how, how, how <laughs> yeah how so uh is igor here our cto otherwise i can also explain it a little bit from a more business oriented I, I think he's uh, a little occupied with the the launch uh, but um I, I can help out a little bit there as well if um if you want to start, Seb, or uh, I can take over. Oh, cool. All right, I'm on it. Um, so <clears throat> there's an underlying infrastructure that the team have been working on for the last oh, several months. I, I, I can't remember the timeline exactly, but it is um, what's called Blue's Chain, and it's a layer zero protocol. So it's an underlying um, infrastructure that allows the connection between all the different chains. It's built on the Cosmos SDK. So if you have been listening into what World Mobile are doing, kind of like that with what they're building with their, their chain as well. But we've taken it a little bit further to allow for the Blue Shift Dex to be able to connect to all the different chains um, that we want to connect to. So um, in regards to how the actual swaps happen, so we have uh, various liquidity pools that are on those actual native chains. So, for example, we have uh, liquidity pools on um, uh, Polygon and also on Milcomita C1. And when a transaction is um, uh, executed on the DEX, uh, it will find a routing path from uh, the uh, Polygon network, for example, over to C1. So if you're swapping uh, Matic for NMaker tokens, which is the example in the video that we have, uh, uh, we do it the other way around, um, but we'll find a trading path between uh, the various liquidity pools. And there's always a token of some sort that um, is uh, interconnecting a uh, token between all those ecosystems. It's usually the, the blues tokens. So you will have the blues tokens within the, the Polygon um, ecosystem and you'll be able to, and what it does is it routes those trades all the way through from um, Polygon to um, C1 based on what tokens it needs to swap. And it does it all for you within the interface. So it's a, a seamless experience from, from that perspective. But then the, the blues chain, the L0, it records it. It acts as a ledger. Um, so it can, um, it will, uh, record exactly what gets traded from one side to the other and release the various tokens, um, into your, uh, EVM based wallet from there. So that's the, the bare essentials of how that all works and the mechanics behind it. Um, the team are also working on the native integration over to the Cardano blockchain as well um, so that um, we don't have to use an EVM-based wallet. Um, there will be native support for Cardano um, as well as uh, Milcometer's wrapped smart contracts eventually when that comes out into play. And you'll be able to use your native uh, Cardano wallet as well. So you'll be able to interact with the DEX with uh, NAMI Walt, for example, have an actual um, uh, liquidity pools on the Cardano ecosystem too, um, and then swap all the way over from whatever chain we're connected to. Maybe That's adding right. to this a little bit. So, it had, like Peter has just explained. So, can you can to... I just interrupt for a second because I'm not oh, sure, sure Seb, if I think that. Our host. I actually, you. I can, I can hear him now again. Okay, so okay, just want to make sure. It. Got it. Okay, carry on. Sorry about that. So, can you hear me or not? Yeah, you're good. I, I can, can hear you. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So it's interesting to see, um, and building on what 
Peter has just explained what's going on in this interoperability space. So there are some protocols with this similar functionality. Router protocol is one. Uh, Orbs Labs has introduced a similar solution, which is called uh, Early Bird. And the nice thing really is that it's the, this cross-chain communication protocol, uh, which yeah, coordinates the transactions between different chains on which we, of course, uh, need to have launched. But it's a very, or the goal is really to provide the seamless experience. And the big advantage over all these typical cross-chain communication protocols is that we don't need intermediate assets. Um, and that's what brings me back to the portfolio approach. So um, usually if you want to sw swap a token uh, from chain A to chain B, you would need intermediate assets. Intermediate assets, which are these bridge tokens, uh, these rep tokens or synthetic tokens that would allow you to swap one token from chain A to B with a couple of different steps, but we don't need this. Uh, we that's that's really coming back to the portfolio approach that now works uh, in the cross chain environment and allows us to have these direct swaps and interactions between the chains, which is not only making the the process super efficient, but also way more reliable because it takes out the different potential breaches between uh, the different actors that we would be involved, the different intermediaries and. Uh, yeah, gives a whole different level of, of user experience. And then. the associated risk. Yeah, exactly. So that's the reliability part, right? So not only less fractions in terms of or for the user experience, but also definitely less risk because of less potential breaches between the different intermediaries, intermediate, uh, intermediate assets that w were necessary, let's say, in the past to make these cross-chain uh, swaps possible. And if you then compare different uh, cross-chain communication protocols, that, that's one of the features that really stand out also from a technological point of view, that we don't need these intermediate assets, uh, which come uh, with all the risks uh, and, and downsides that were experienced in the past uh, when those bridges were still necessary to execute those swaps. Now, I'm a trader. I like to trade. So... I've been looking into options for cross-chain liquidity, right? And one of the ones that I've played around with so far is uh, NuFi Wallet, right? And using their uh, system, which I believe is on um, Milkomina, right? So, but there was definitely some pretty high fees involved in those swaps. What's the fee structure going to look like on Blue Shift? Pete, could you, could you take over, please? Yeah. Um, I can't remember... Off the top of my head, it's it's a very minimal, um, tiny gas fee that you pay within the um, the swap itself. The um, I'm not sure which what fee you were paying um, there. They use a, they use a third party. Uh, I okay, to, I know to what you're talking swaps, about. Right. So you, you're probably looking at um, uh, multi chains fees. So uh, if you have to use like a multi chain or a sellers, yeah, it wasn't multi chain, but yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, so the, they all have um, uh, a, a bridging fee of some sort. So it's like a set amount. So you can bring over like a million dollars worth of um, liquidity, but you you pay that small fee, or you can bring in a tiny bit of liquidity and you still stay, pay that same fee. So I can't it's, remember uh, what it is off. Zero point one fee. Oh, okay. okay. Um. So is it 0.1% or is it a set fee as well? It's, it, it, it maxes out at some point. It's 0 0.1. That's uh, what I just received yeah, okay. from the CTO. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's probably what you're seeing when you're using um, a bridge um, on whatever decks you were playing with. Yeah. Um, so that's why I was kind of concerned because one of the things is, is I wanted to move some liquidity around, but it just wasn't worth it, right? Because it wasn't thousands of dollars and the fees were just way too high. Um, so it's interesting. And, and another thing that I like that you guys have done was, is the portfolios, which you guys have had out for a while. Um, can, can you explain to what's the advantages of, of this cross chain liquidity for Cardano? Do can you maybe get into depth on what's the advantages that Cardano may be able to see from, from blue shift? Sure. Oh, well, of course. Yeah. So do you want to take it? So no, Can go ahead. Just start with a bit more broader, and I will then deep dive into the Cardano index. Yeah, maybe also then um, relating it back to the conversation we just had about the gas fees. So gas fees will be comparatively lower to what we see today. Why is that the case? Because we don't need those, number one, we don't need those third parties anymore. 
Number two, it's not only the two chains are involved. So uh, as a rule of thumb, the more chains you can, or the more liquidity you can tap into from uh, the more chains that are available, the lower will be uh, the gas prices. So uh, fees will be lower and the transactions will become way more efficient because you don't have these chain of assets anymore that you have to go through to make the swap happen, but it's a way more direct type of transfer. And by taking out different steps in between, it becomes not only time, but also cost-based uh, way more efficient. And the huge advantage is uh, then, of course, and, and that ties back into the Cardano index and um, the Sena uh, successfully launched some time ago. So there was huge benefit for it. Uh, the Cardano ecosystem is, of course, to bring additional liquidity in in a safe, reliable way from the outside to also attract uh, maybe liquidity providers, users from outside environments that may not be so familiar with the community, but that, for example, can um, in, or put their liquidity into broader portfolios, into uh, or, and they're using that as a step stone, let's say, into the Cardano environment, but then also the other way around, a very nice way for the Cardano ecosystem to present itself uh, to other ecosystems, other communities in a joint type of way to really leverage the synergies from from, from joint marketing initiatives, from uh, being in this in this uh, in these indexes together, and um, yeah, tapping into all these joint initiatives. Yeah, and I can take it over from here. So, as you can imagine, any typical DEX storing liquidity in pairs, there's A, B, B, C, A, C, C, B, B, D. Uh, there is a lot of fragmentation, and that definitely affects the uh, capital efficiency. And in our case, by storing liquidity in portfolios, where, as Pete had mentioned, there is usually at max one token that is interconnecting, that is repeating, and usually it's the blues token, all the other tokens are not being repeated, so they are stored without being fragmented across different pairs, different portfolios, and that helps uh, to bring a lot of different benefits. So this portfolio logic uh, offers very concrete benefits, such as lower price slippage, 10 times lower impermanent loss. Uh, it also allows for single-sided liquidity provisioning, so towards any portfolio, even if it has seven, eight assets, you can provide liquidity and get all the benefits associated with this portfolio by providing any asset of your choice or a combination of them. And last but not least, this uh, the way of uh, storing liquidity in portfolios protects investors from overexposure uh, to particular assets. So that's what, what are the benefits for users on top of what Sebastian had mentioned. And let me tell you a little bit of what benefits do projects get by being listed in those portfolios. Some time ago, as you may remember, I believe it was November, we came here on this very space with a few of the listed projects, namely Cornucopius, uh, Wi-Fi, and Maker, and uh, they all spoke about why they joined the Cardano Index, and there was a shared narrative in their thoughts as if it opens doors to tap into source of new users, new liquidity, and new blockchains. And now with the launch of the cross-chain portfolio protocol, we are delivering upon this promise. We are now connecting. Step number one, we are connecting Cardano and Polygon. And you already can see here on top of this uh, uh, space, a link to a video where you can see how this swap is happening. So namely, we are swapping end maker that is listed in the Cardano index directly with Matic uh, on Polygon. And it's all done in one click, in one UI, in less than uh, 10 seconds. Where can you get anything like this? And this is, was the promise that we gave to the projects of you join the Cardano index, and we, we help you get exposure to the other chains. So. That's at very least is what we offer to the projects uh, besides of all the nice marketing that we are doing together. I would also like to highlight that in one hour from now, Cardano 360 is going live and BlueShift is featured there presenting their cross-chain portfolio uh, protocol. 
That's awesome that you're going to be on 360. Um, as far as the index, right, there's Endmaker, Cornucopius, and um, Vi-Fi, some of the ones you've named. Can projects get added to that index? And if so, how would I go about doing that if I had a project? Yes, projects can be added. However, there is a, uh, some sort of procedure that needs to take place. Step number one is uh, you let us know if it's your project or if it's a project that you know wants to join. You just reach out to me. Follow me on Twitter. You can reach out to Pete. You can reach out to anyone from BlueShift team or even to BlueShift Twitter account. We will notice that and we will get in touch with the project. We will speak to them to understand what's their interest, why they want to join, and what they have to offer in terms of utility of their token, what it is that uh, they think makes them unique. So some sort of <laughs> interview that is uh, going both ways. But then there will be a phase of doing validation where we are looking qualitatively and quantitatively quite intensively at all, all the information that's available publicly. We are looking at white papers. We are looking at market circulation. We are looking at uh, economics. We are looking at the team. We are looking at utility, listing, partners, investors, all of that to, to really maximize the chances that the projects that we do bring to the index, and trust me, there have been many projects that wanted to join and that, uh, that, that were not added because we thought, well, it's quite risky, it's quite volatile, there is not quite enough uh, liquidity stake for this project elsewhere, and we don't want to expose our users to that type of associated risk with these types of situations. So on the basis of this analysis, we would create a proposal that is then being supported and voted towards by our DAO. And that is how we get uh, get along with uh, creating a final composition. So to be very concrete, next step, just reach out to me, send me a few messages, and we're going to take it from there. Awesome. Thank you. Blockjock, you have a question? Yeah, I have one. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys have chosen Cardano uh, to expose us to the rest of the ecosystem. And what I'm curious about is, is that how, uh, as far as marketing and promotion goes, are you, go you guys going on to say, you know, Polygon's uh, particular AMAs that they do, uh, other ecosystems and their leads that are out there doing these Twitter spaces and things like that, along with, you know, uh, backend uh, conversations and things of that nature, surrounding bringing liquidity here uh it's one of the things we absolutely need uh and there is plenty of liquidity on ethereum so us throwing our liquidity that way seems not beneficial but them throwing their liquidity this way does and and what kind of marketing and promotion what does that look like for you guys well it's a very good question and there's a bunch of uh different initiatives that we are trying, starting with collaborating with foundations and the projects themselves, doing bounty campaigns, doing AMAs, tutorials, and all sorts of um, just usual campaigns. But what makes our approach unique is that the moment we enter a new ecosystem, and let's say in this case, Polygon is the one that we are going on the mainnet today, uh, the very next day we start comprehensive work on putting together the Polygon Index. And creation of the index is uh, not only the job of, uh, you know, uh, getting some liquidity in and getting some promotion for the Blue Shift project. Well, actually, this is the best way to get to know the ecosystem, to get to know the best projects within the ecosystem and to associate yourself with those best projects. What I like about the Web3 industry is that despite the regular, um, the regular traditional uh, industries where uh, how you say it? competition competition is the natural way how companies are just uh, differentiating from one another here we have to move all together and if you don't collaborate if you don't find your synergies with oftentimes com competitors of yours well you're very likely to be set aside and that's why this portfolio approach and building uh, indexes helps us a lot to be up to date with everything that's happening in different ecosystems we are now, for example, finalizing the com composition of the Algorand Index. And uh, there's been uh, quite a journey uh, discovering that ecosystem. And uh, there's one interesting project that is actually going to be like a Spotify uh, for Web3. Uh, it's called Opolus, and they also have a very interesting uh, product. So, yeah, discovering 
projects discovering the leaders of thoughts working with uh, tier one foundations and uh, governing organizations that can provide you support with tools or information or access introductions that's the way how we go about and then a lot of cross marketing and a lot of the ways how to collaborate with particular project depending on the utility so Zena, currently just walk me through a conversation you're having with somebody over at polygon um you're discussing having to do with you know, what you can bring to the table uh, from liquidity that's on our side over to Polygon and expose their projects and things of that nature to Cardano's end users. Um, And then that conversation should shift, right? And it should be discussed as to what Polygon could bring uh, over to us. Is that kind of the way the conversation goes? Uh, The promise goes the way that when we go to the ecosystem and we create the index with the best projects in it, uh, we make sure that this project have also good representative power to to give a good snapshot for any external user to have an idea of what Cardano is like, what Albert is like, what is Polygon like. For anyone that is unfamiliar with this ecosystem, it also serves as as an educational purpose to understand at, at glance what is there. And then connecting those two indexes, for example, in this case, the future Polygon index with the Cardano index is a promise on its own. We are making it tradable, the best projects of one ecosystem with the best projects of another ecosystem. And this sets a good, um, how you call it? Um, Not watermark, not trademark, Uh, like an example. It sets a good example for other projects to to ask themselves, that, that's a smart thing to do. Do I want to get uh, more exposure than my in my native chain? Do I feel that pro- my project and utility of my token has uh, also cross-chain value? And yeah, if that is the case, they're going to be joining. And that is the promise of that connection. Connection is the value in this case. And the way to trade them natively without wrapping in a safe environment, that is what brings these ecosystems closer. Well, I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much for answering my questions. And uh, I look forward to any updates that uh, Pete brings. And uh, he he does a great job with the YouTube channel. So uh, thanks very much. Thank you. So today is is the Polygon um, start, right? So after today, what will I be able to do on Blue Shift? I'm I'm new. I don't know much. I I just want to go trade some Endmaker for some Matic. Will I be able to do that? As soon as we launch, and it's expected in a few hours from now, you will be able to access BlueShift app. And within the trading UI, you will be just able to select the network token. And in the second field, we choose network and token. And on the step one, it will be all the tokens listed in the Cardano index and Matic on the Polygon side. And that's at the start of it. You can expect... In, throughout the summer, uh, seeing us connecting all the EVM-based L2s, including Optimism, Arbitrum, ZikaSync, and others, to make a true connectivity of the EVM world and to bring those ecosystems clo- closer through the narrative of the portfolios of the best projects per ecosystem all being connected. I hope to see more Cardano projects reaching out to you because just the ability to be able to trade them in seconds instead of waiting minutes for some batchers um, sometimes could be well, helpful I couldn't too. agree more. I couldn't agree more. And uh, let me be honest with you. The fact that we are on the Comeda is something that is uh, a bit tricky for some projects to see as a, not to see as a barrier. However, Milk Comeda guys are releasing what is called smart wrapped contracts, which to the extent that I understand it, will be will make it possible for Cardano users to interact with Milcomeda and directly to our um, capabilities with their Cardano wallets. So there will be no need to shift to any other MetaMask type of wallets. And that thing will bring Milcomeda and Cardano closer. And I can only ask you guys present in this space listening to it right now to reach out to the projects that you think can benefit from it and them being on that index will benefit cardano because those trading between all those chains and cardano will bring new new users 
and in Chris Cardano's TVL. So help us with that uh, promise, and I promise you we will deliver. I'll do my best. Sometimes people don't want to listen to me, but I'll I'll yell at them. I promise. That's good. Anything last? Anything last that you want to get out that don't, that you haven't don't, covered? Don't yell at him like you yell at me, though. Okay. I mean, you know, some. Well, if I yell at him like that. I yell at you, Block Jock, they're never going to talk to me. <laughs> Any last things you want to cover? Anything we didn't touch base that you you have to tell us? Um, and then find us. Tell us where where can we access Blue Shift. Um, how, how do we go about doing that? Cause I know there's people in here. I know personally, but I know there's a lot of people that don't, right. So like maybe walk them through that and then get any last things out that, you, that we haven't right. covered. So what you do is you click a blue ship icon, you click follow. That's step number one. Step number two <laughs> is you click on my name. You follow me as well, just so <laughs> I can also benefit from that conversation. But once you've reached the blue shift, uh, Twitter account. In the description, there is our link tree. And there you can see a tutorial made by Pete where he walks you through all the main functionality of our DAX. It is prior the cross chain because it's yet to be launched in, in a few hours from now, but it will give you a good snapshot of our portfolio logic, how it works, what we have, and why we designed it this particular way. So it's a very easy, you know, how Pete does things. So just 10 minutes, you'll have a good understanding of how it works. And then there is no better way to understand how things work than to just go, try, and just do it yourself. Just play with it. There's can one I, last thing I, I have you, to add I, as well. Can I just give you a suggestion, Sina? Um, I don't know how open are you to having your, D, your, your DMs open? But they're close right now, and it's hard to communicate when when you can message people. So maybe for a little bit, just keep them open and see how Thanks, that goes. Jenny, I'll do if it gets too I'll crazy, do I'll open it. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Yeah, the, the the one last thing that we have is the uh, commemorative Pepe NFT that we've got. So I saw a. Um, a pinned tweet a little bit earlier there, but it's it's just a little bit of fun that we're having, um, you know, let, why not spend some resources and, and build up an NFT collection? And uh, I'm so surprised how quickly the guys turned it around. Um, but yeah, for anyone that wants to participate in um, the Zealy community that we have, there's a, a link to it as well. I'll put a, a, a pinned tweet at the top. But you can join in and um, anyone that uh, gets up on that Zealy board get whitelisted so they can uh, mint that uh, NFT. Um, it's uh, just minting cost, so it's um, nothing else. And we may put in some extra utility because we have, we're have we working with various partners that um, can do it for us. Maybe. Yes, I, put, no I, pinned, it all, I pinned it all out the top, so sure. definitely Thank check you. it out. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I think cross chain liquidity is is definitely. I know I'm a, I'm a Cardano maxi, right? I really am. Right now, the only coin outside of Cardano I hold is Ergo. However, during the bull run, I will be diversifying um, because, as we all know, during a bull run, you can't not usually miss a trade, right? And some projects like Matic usually are Polygon or go up in, in a lot of percent. So I may want to move funds over there, right? So I'm excited to see projects like Blue Shift come online and give me the ability to be able to do that. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do since, uh, I don't know, what year is this? 2020, probably like five years ago. So on Cardano. So I'm excited to see what you guys are bringing in the market. I appreciate your time. I thank you guys for coming Hopefully, Pete, maybe you could stop back in, in a month or so and just give us a five, ten minute update on on how things have, are going for you. I'm obviously going to play around with the system because that's just what I do. So, but again, thanks, Seb, Zena, Pete. I'll be watching you. <laughs> we hope so. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to Card On Over Coffee. Special thanks to Pete, Zena, and Seb from Blue Shift. We look forward to the cross chain launch today, and we hope to see you, Blue Shift, and everybody else at Rare Evo August 24th through the 26th in Denver, Colorado. 
Get your tickets now at rarevo.io. Use coupon code COC10 for 10% off. We can't wait to see you there.